Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. The armour of God and how we are to approach it, understand it and use it. We're, of course, uh, towards the end of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We're reading it through your new translation, The Truth, Colin, and uh, very practical it is too. Verse 13 of chapter 6. So accept everything God has made available to you to enable you to stand steadfast when evil attacks. Yes, no matter what happens, you are able to stand firm and to remain standing. You stand firm with his truth like a belt you keep around your waist for support. His righteousness is like a breastplate that protects you. You wear the shoes of the gospel that you are always ready for any eventuality and can walk in peace. Your faith is like a shield that you have to take hold of and that enables you to overcome anything the devil throws at you. The assurance of your salvation is like a protective helmet enabling you to encounter all the devil's lies and efforts to deceive you in your thinking. Now, you see... I believe that this translation brings out the meaning and the real intention of what Paul is saying. He's not saying, put on a belt, put on a breastplate, put on a helmet, you know, as if you're getting dressed into a suit of armor. Um, he says that, but what, what he is meaning is you've got to take hold of those qualities that enable you to stand firm. You've got to wear truth like a belt that supports you. So the emphasis is not on the belt, but on the truth. It's the truth that you need in your life. Your righteousness is like a breastplate. Now, a breastplate protects But it's not the breastplate that protects, it's the righteousness that is the breastplate that protects. So you've got to walk in truth and you've got to walk in righteousness. When he says put on, he doesn't mean, you know, oh, Lord, I take truth and put it on like a belt. And oh, Lord, I take righteousness and put it on. No, no, no. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. You've got to live in the truth. You've got to live in righteousness. And if you live in righteousness, that will be like a breastplate that protects you. You wear the shoes of the gospel and therefore you walk in peace and you're spreading peace all around you. Why? Because that is your way of life. You not only know the gospel in your head, but you are working out the gospel in your daily life. Your faith is a shield, but you see, you can't just say, oh, I take the shield of faith. I mean, you know, I hear people <laughs> pray like that, and I know what they mean, but, uh, you know, it's, it's unreal, to be absolutely honest with you. If you have faith, then that faith is like a shield, and it doesn't matter what the devil throws at you, those fiery darts of the devil will bounce off your shield because your attitude towards every situation and every attack of the enemy is one of faith. You see, we're talking about a way of life where you walk in the truth, you walk in righteousness, you live out the gospel, you walk in faith, and then you see salvation is like a helmet. Why Why a helmet? Because the helmet protects the head, which protects the brain. So the devil is always going to try to attack you in your thinking, try to undermine your faith in your salvation and your acceptance uh, in Christ Jesus and your position and, and inheritance that he gives you in him. So you wear the assurance of your salvation like that helmet. It's a way of life. You're walking in the assurance of everything that God has done for you. You're walking in your assurance that you are someone who has been saved. The old has gone. The new has come. You're a new creation. You don't look back. You don't go back into your past life because now he has made you new. The old has gone. The new has come. You have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You have died and now you are alive with Christ in his life. So you walk in the truth. You walk in righteousness. You walk in the assurance of your salvation. You walk in faith. It's a way of life that Paul is talking about. 
He's not saying, you know, just live how you how how you want to, and then when you have a need, put on this and put on that and put on the other. He's talking about a way of life, and then he says in verse eighteen, "You have not only a defensive shield, but an offensive weapon, the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. Whenever you pray, depend on the Spirit to lead you and fill your prayer with His life and power, no matter what you are asking of God." Oh, how important! I mean, how many prayers do Christians pray without dependence on the Spirit? How many prayers do they pray without saying, "Holy Spirit, just fill my prayer now with Your faith, with Your life, with Your power"? How much activity do we do in our own strength, even though the Spirit of God is there within us, because we do not depend upon the Spirit, because we do not defer to the Spirit, but we just continue on in our own way? Uh, really in our own weakness, how often do we fail when we needn't have failed if we depended upon the Spirit who lives within us? So it's all about choices, really. Life is full of choices. Every day is full of choices because we can choose to depend upon ourselves or depend upon Him. When we were talking about the great inheritance recently and my new book that was published earlier this year by that title, The Great Inheritance, all about Christ in us. So important, Julia, that that we know how to depend upon the Christ in us, how to defer to Him, how to draw upon all the riches and resources that He has given us, so that we we do live in success. We live in victory. We overcome. And when the enemy comes against us, we don't say, oh, the enemy is having a go at me. Of course he's having a go at you, but you have greater authority. You have authority over him. You have power over whatever spirits are coming against you, whatever disruption the enemy wants to bring into your life. But you see, if you don't exercise that authority, if you don't use the qualities of life that God has given you, then you are going to suffer defeat instead of victory. And I I just want to emphasize again and again and again what Paul is talking about here with your spiritual armor is a way of life. You see, uh, people often say, well, he is in detention in Rome and he's being guarded by Roman soldiers. So he, you know, just looked at the uniform and he, he used this analogy. But think about a soldier. You see, a soldier has this protective armor, but The protective armor is only of use to him because he has the lifestyle of a soldier. And when he goes to war, he knows what to do. He knows how to defend himself. He knows how to attack. He doesn't just stand there in the middle of the field and say, well, I've got my armor on, so I'm safe. No, no, he is a soldier. And and this, this is what Paul is saying. We've got to have the mentality of a soldier, so that no matter what comes against us, we will stand firm and we will not be shaken, that the enemy will not be able to shake us out of our faith, out of our well-being. And, I mean, there's not a Christian listening to me now that doesn't know what it is to have adverse things happen, come against them, traumas to take place in their lives. And the question is, Julia, How do we react to such situations? Do we respond with faith? Do we take hold of that truth that is ours? Do we uh, defend ourselves with the righteousness that is ours in Christ? Or do we just cave in to the lies and deceptions of the enemy? Remember that in Scripture, he is the deceiver of the brethren. And I mean, you, you've only got to hear a Christian say, oh, I'm really coming under attack by the enemy. And, and you know, well, Dear me, bless that person. He has not got any idea of how to stand as a soldier of Christ in the power and authority that God has given him. Because actually, you know, if the enemy comes against you, what do you do? You submit yourself to God, you resist the enemy, and he flees. Now, an enemy is not going to flee from someone that says, oh, the devil's doing so much to disrupt my life. I mean, the devil's laughing all the way to hell when somebody has that kind of attitude. No, we've got to stand firm in our faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And without faith, we're often going to suffer failure and defeat. 
I know there are some people who say, oh, I don't like all this talk about faith. Well, then you don't want to be a Christian because the whole life of a Christian is, according to Scripture, a matter of faith from first to last. It's the only way to please God. So there's no reason for any Christian to have a sense of being defeated. Um, if they're prepared to be dependent on God, then they will have the victory every time. Yes, and sometimes that battle comes, that that um, victory comes very easily. Sometimes it comes after a kind of a struggle. Fight the good fight of faith, Paul tells his young protege. You see, and that's the very thing that some Christians don't do. I, you know, it 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 amazes me, especially when it comes to healing. I, I, as you know, so many people ask me to pray for them for healing, and I see the difference of attitude in people. You know, that there are some people come with that that r r real faith. Well, that's it. You know, just pray for me, and the devil's going to be defeated. This sickness has to go. No, you know, whatever it is that's coming against me cannot prevail. Boom, boom, and and. They're in fighting mood. They're in victory mode, and they get the victory. And another person, you know, how are you? Well, I've still got the symptoms. <laughs> and, I, well, if you don't rise up in faith, then the symptoms are likely to persist. But if in the face of those symptoms you hold fast to the victory and you are proclaiming the victory, <laughs> the symptoms aren't going to prevail. Is it called perseverance? But life, well, it's the perseverance of faith. But you see, you've got to have the faith first to persevere in. And, and there's as so many people, you see, if, if you are going to pray for something by faith, you're looking at God and what he says. You're not looking at the circumstances and what you feel. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 